When Pina danced, you knew who she was. It was always very clear. Immediately, you sensed the persona. The moment she moves, you thought, uh-oh, that's who she is. You don't have to you don't have to know her name. You don't have to know. That's who she is. And to me, that's the signature of a great dancer. All I can say is with Pina, Pina loved New York. <laughs> She loved the idea of the lofts downstairs. She loved the idea that we were living in the garment district and there were trucks because we lived in a loft. She thought all that was real wonderful. At that time, once six o'clock came, the trucks left. It was like a desert. And quiet, quiet, quiet. a tremendous effect on us. Tina had her major time as a young woman. She spent in New York. She had the scholarship to be in New York. She prolonged the scholarship for more than two years. She uh, had met all the major choreographers, which had a great influence on her work. For Pina, definitely, it was like coming home. Her heart is in New York. How does America and American dance look to Pina Bausch? difficult question and so quickly this is a shock <laughs> well there are so many different kinds of dancing so I had a, a, a big honor and pleasure to see a lot of your very important dancers and choreographers before and uh, so their influence is still important today. And uh, besides that, you're having um, so many different cultures living together, and they are all different kind of dancing too. So it's the first question is, what kind of dance do you mean, really? Because they are the question, what is dance? You know, there is not only classical ballet or one kind of modern dance. There are so many different kinds of how to express your heart with your body. It's so rich, and I think here in America you find everything. So it's, uh, this question is unbelievable big. New York is an attractive place for everybody in the world, but I think especially for dancers. She went to school for one university and uh, Juliet in New York and these two schools which are very different from their background, from the experience the teachers and the, we had the idea to uh, to dig and to dig in the archive and dig in the memories of some of the older dancers. I think these people like Paul Sonasado and Damia Foya, they were very, very important for her. And I think, especially because when she came, she didn't speak a word of English, uh, she told me. So I think it must, be, must have been a very strange situation for her. The dance was the, the language she spoke.
was introduced to Pina by Anthony Tudor, and I was training with him at the old school, the Metropolitan School of Ballet, at the old opera house on 39th Street. And Pina was a student at Juilliard, so I didn't know them, but Tudor taught at Juilliard also, and he was extremely impressed with Pina. <laughs> and so one day he told me, I'm bringing this lovely girl from Juilliard, she's from Wuppertal, she's from Germany. I think Peter was only about 19 years old. And uh, I was in my 20s, and uh, Tudor told me he was going to bring Pina to the Met, and she would study with him, and he was going to put her into the Metropolitan Ballet. She still had, a, I guess, a few more weeks at Juilliard, it was the end of the and she was going to go back to Germany for a visit, and then come back to work. And the reason Mr. Tudor put her into the Metropolitan Ballet was so she could earn a living, because when she left, she would lose her grant that she was getting. And Tudor was very clear about that. He said, now, Pina, don't worry. This is just a job. This is not who you are. Anyway, he said, when she comes, I'm going to have her take a class. I would like you to watch her, because I think the two of you should work together. You might get along real well. And so I told her, you come to my studio tonight. We talked like sign language. Uh, and I had a studio. I was teaching classes in the evening to earn money for the studio. And I said, you come and take class. You don't need the class, but I can, you can see how we work. She said, oh, I like it here. I come and work with you. And just like that. And it was really a... It's hard to say, you know, when you you click with somebody. It was uh, uh, it was like our personalities, without knowing each other, blended. If I start when I see Pina, it was in the studio from Paul Sanasado in New York. We were walking, taking class. Paul came and said, kids, kids, come here. Now you're going to meet the most incredible artist you never met in the world. And I was like, OK. And then we had someone coming with a clover. Hello, hello. I said, what is this woman? What is this? And then it was like love. We just, it was incredible. We start to, to do everything together, to dance on the street, to love the same people. And, and she looked at me and she said, I love this. And all my teachers say, it's not good for you. You have to open. And Pina said, I love you. And I said, someone loves me like I am. It was really like someone just loved me like I am me. <laughs> start this life in New York with, uh, oh my God, because no money, trying to uh, do modeling, to clean the studio to not pay my class, you know, like the one to, to be there and be afraid because uh, New York in 70 was really hard. So. 
I was very interested in the German expression, and of course, Pina is very German in that way, you know. She's very deep, very sensitive at the same time, underneath very strong. <laughs> you know, Pina is very gentle on the surface, but that's not Pina. <laughs> Pina underneath is extremely strong, and I knew that. And you see it in her work, uh, La Sacra. That's Pina. That's Pina, totally. More than just uh, the body, it always has to do with going beyond the borders of flesh. It's more than that. So it's kind of evolving from the inside to the outside, and then eventually will will go out of your skin, or has to actually, yeah. And then starts the the pina dance from that moment on. time I didn't hear about her I saw her work on TV <laughs> the first thing I saw was this uh, Sacre du Printemps the Rite of Spring on TV in 70 1979 or 78 somehow I had this feeling like this is something like this this is what I'm looking for what I what I like I joined the Volkwang Tanz Studio, so I started working there. Well, this place we're here, this is the Lichtburg, it's an old movie house. And there's still the screen there, and up there, uh, there are still the old seats. And this is the place in the middle of Wuppertal Barmen, where we came and still come every day to work on the pieces, to do our classes, to carry on. There was always material around, and when we were working on new pieces, you would also use these materials and look for something what you would wear for an idea you have or in general for a rehearsal or working on your own movements. She was sitting at her table, right there in the front, the big table, with a lot of room for all her papers to spread out her papers. She was sitting there and watching. 
And then we had there in the back all these mirrors. Sometimes, sometimes we took the mirror and made a little room for ourselves to find, to think about something. And then she would say, can you show? Can you come here? And so, no, I'm not ready yet. <laughs> It was an incredible honor and I also learned very, very much about um, things I didn't know anything about before. Most of the time I was in New York and always when I came back also I went to New York and that is of course endless. It's fantastic to be there. And the other visits were shorter ones so I didn't have such a big uh, chance to see so many things to learn, to meet, yes, but not, not like in New York. You discover so many different things which I never met, you know. She speaks very often about, specifically, especially about uh, Anthony Tudor. He was for her, I think, the, the, the most... Um, the most important person I think she she probably worked with in New York and also in, in Essen because he came in Germany and she would speak regularly or remember with, with a, a strong emotion and sort of little proud as well. Also, Paul Taylor was involved with us. Peanut did a dance for Paul Taylor. We would share concerts, you know, Paul Taylor. And Paul Taylor, everybody liked Peanut. But she did one performance with Paul Taylor, a, a one minute piece he made for her. Paul Taylor was also very interested in natural movement. seeing peace from Paul Taylor, I can recognize something there. You feel that she had this capacity of tech, what was important to her at that time, to grow in her dance and choreographic life. I'm very verbal. You say, Papino, no, she'd be very silent. Yet you knew there was a lot going on. And if you asked her, she sometimes would tell you and sometimes it was private. When Pina came to the studio, the first thing we did was working on a ballet called In View of God. And she had a duet with Judy, one of the young little girls, as her daughter. And they got along real well. showed up to the studio and I was probably 10 at that point, uh, just maybe turning 11 and um, she was always uh, special. She must have been 17 or 18, so young. We opened the piece together, which means that even before the curtain went up, I am curled like a little ball on the floor, I was 11. She's squatting, you know, on the floor, sitting on the floor, completely hovered over me. So that's my strongest memory of her, and it's a very intimate memory. She 
came back when I was a young teenager. I think she came back twice. Um, I was a young teenager, and she did a, a solo, so I remember that. I remember it partly because there was a rumor going around that she had based it on me somehow, um, because I was always sort of looking at things, you know. And, and so she made a solo about someone who's always looking at things. And I remember her doing that because her body, the way she could move, it was, it was miraculous. She was very inward, you know, and quiet and sorrowful. You know, that's, that was my impression. I don't remember her, you know, giggling, you know, or, you know, jumping around. Later we had people come from France, so they were very kind of joyful, Malou and these people, they, you know. But I don't remember Pina being like that. She was serious. It was a wonderful time. You see, New York at that time was more intimate. Some nights when it was real hot in New York, as it would get, we would go down to the ferry boat to Staten Island. And you only had to pay a nickel. And you got on it, and it went across. And at that time, you didn't have to get off. You could stay on it and come back. And we would sit on the ferry boat, smoking cigarettes, <laughs> drinking coffee, and going back and forth because it was cool out there. <laughs> and Pina loved to do that. Once she said, let's go to Ferry Island. I wish she would have danced longer. Because that's what Pina was. And Pina is something special. Now, in the soccer, they move like Pina. because she was still dancing then, so I'm sure she showed them a lot of how she moved because they captured. And of course, she and Malou are like this. So Malou not only captures what Pina was, but then Malou adds what Malou is. Malou is more earthy than Pina ever was. And so she, she knew how to use Malou. She knew she had the right person. But that's a long solo at the end. And Malou doesn't drop it for a minute. Pina, you know, all this, all this movement, all this, uh, yeah, the, the writing of Pina. So I, I'm really lucky because I live this with her. Strong woman, incredible, and so intelligent, and so sensitive, and so beautiful. She can make you feel unique. You are unique for Pina. When I first met Pina in Saratoga in the summer of '72, it was for the Saratoga Summer Academy Dance Festival. And um, she was uh, invited by Paul Sanasardo as a teacher, as a choreographer, to restage one of her pieces. When we were there in Saratoga, Pina asked us, Manu and I, she told me that she eventually had a project, but she, didn't, she wasn't specific about it, and if I would like to, to eventually work with her. I 
it's a reason why I came in New York, I think. Maybe that's the person I have to be to work with, or I don't know. I just felt I want to come in Germany to feel how I feel. How is it to come in Germany? How is the feeling? And of course, after New York, it's a big thing, no? It's, uh, you know, so I came here, and I, I did not know. Then I, yeah, and Pina was, yes, please, I want so much that you stay here. And, and I said, okay, I try. And that's it. You know, when I love someone, I have to feel the love every day. If I feel it's not there, I leave. So I left after two years. And, uh, but love is love. And then she grab you like this, you know? I say, yes, but my love. When we came back, I say, okay, Pina, yes, but only if you dance. Because for me, everybody should see you dance. And she said to me, yes, my love. I said, Pina, really, only if you dance. That was my, uh, you know. And yeah, okay. So then we came, and then we do Café Mille in two weeks. Very quick, very quick. And I was always front and doing learning the movement with Pina, you know, all these things. And really learn with Pina, all the movement and all the things. And all the time, Pina, you have to dance. Yes, yes, Melo, don't worry, I will be in a egg. I will be in a corner. It's incredible piece about life, about human being, about losing someone, about being separate of someone. I never did really a piece because of the violence. I did it always because of the opposition. It was always there to suffer with the, with the person. We suffer with somebody to, to understand what this person feels or must feel. That's why there is some violence, but it's not because of the violence, it's the opposite. Where certain feelings come from? Why is it like that? What is this man or this person missing? What happened? Why, why comes it out so strong? And what happened for the, in, in those rehearsals with this sort of very intime and special atmosphere. When uh, we thought, okay, the piece is there and we, we made a run through and we were all like, okay, yeah, it's that, but we we all fell at different level that something was missing and, and it put some 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 chairs just like what we had there. As we did it, as we finished, then with the chair we thought that's it. I mean it was clear that was the piece. For me it's it's it has of course a special place in in, in my For a little while, I was also going to New York, yeah. New York is, I mean, it's, the, it's <laughs> as we say, the mecca of, of modern dance. I mean, when you want to go and study modern dance, uh, or you, you go there. You go to the to these people and take their classes. I 
Actually, I went in the 80s, beginning of 80s, 81, 82. Incredible input, but it's from the whole city. It's not only the fact that there are so many dance classes or something, but it's really the city is shaking you up. It's putting you on your head. <laughs> went into her cells, <laughs> into her system, into her cells, and she, it, it, it would always accompany and it would always come out in another way. She was a, such a very skilled observer, such an eye to observe everything and to see things, uh, let's say, let's see, things in relation which you would not maybe, when you look at something, you would not see so much. You would like always look interested and observe. She takes, takes that in and then it comes out in a completely different way somewhere. But uh, inside of her, it went through her and, and comes out. We went to visit Martha Hill one day. She was the head of the Juilliard School. And of course, Pina studied there and they knew from long, long time ago. And she was 93 or something in Brooklyn. And a couple of us and with Pina, we went to visit her. conversation, to follow this conversation there, there, Pina was talking a little bit about that time also, and that was, yeah, that was fascinating. Martha Hill was somebody for her, she really appreciated a lot, you know, like, was an important person. She had a lot of mutual respect for her, and uh, you could feel that in that scene there. I remember that was also another impact, another strong experience, these two people meeting, Martha and Pina. Over the many years, sure, we had met many people in New York, maybe. Paul Sanasado and other people, of course, but in 1984, well, I, I remember in the piece 1980, when we danced with the audience, we passed David Bowie, he was sitting there. So that was the highlight of, the, of that evening, yeah, <laughs> to dance along David Bowie. I know the story of her studies in New York only by her um, telling, yeah? So um, I was not with her in New York at that time. And, um, but I think it was very, very rewarding for her to, to, um, to be in the 60s a student in New York, to learn to be a no one, yeah? And to come back 20 years later and be um, a star in Brooklyn Academy of Music. Ina Bausch is one of the most original innovative artists of the 20th century. Like Martha Graham, George Balanchine, and Merce Cunningham, she has set standards, charted new directions, and exerted great influence. It was very rewarding and 
to come back with her own company, with her own work, and with a full house, and get good reviews and get the rewarding. Yeah. have the chance to have this sort of different places in the world and Brooklyn is one of, of, of them to start a really sort of friendship friend collaboration you know of course I mean we go there for performance but it's we go there regularly when it's possible you know sort of like, like every two three years or something. But nevertheless, when we came to New York, there was this in, in tremendous, incredible impact and, and welcome from, from the audience, which was also for us a very rich experience because we realized that the, it was not a dense audience. It was a big, huge, completely mixed audience with film, theater people. It was a, a strong experience and uh, and that makes also something very special coming back regularly to New York. I met Pina there, you know, at the first place somehow. So it's, it's like I don't have the same memory than, than her because she really stayed there a long time and she had those incredible experiences you know, to work with Paul Taylor and to, to you know, all, all what she did there. But funny-wise also, I mean, there was this connection with Paul Sanasado, which was for me also my first, my first step, my first impact with the States, with New York and Saratoga. And each time we went there, there was sort of a sharing memory. She would never tell you, you should feel like this, or this is like this. It was, uh, she gave a hint, and she says that the movement talks to you, and the movement and the music talks to you, and you will understand through that also what it is. Sometimes I hear, or I said it also once, uh, with a new piece, we always start from zero. In a way, yes, we all come in with our blank paper, and we wait for the first question she's putting and we start new so in that sense it's a new piece and from zero she never started from zero she had her insights movement already going on and out of that she went into the piece she never really saw movement she asks the last question, movement themselves, you know, like she develops things like this. She was really, so I'm lucky to have seen her move and do all these beautiful movements. It's not because you are a big artist or because you are Pina Barros. It's just Filipina. Hello, Filipina, you know, you, and you, you, you feel so near that you, are, you don't have this confusion of jealousy, competition. And she was very open and very listen and feel. And yes, 
I have a great respect, a great love. There's always the genuine way of allowing the dancer to express himself. It went through the question, it went through the going, finding the right costume, finding the right music. It went through all these processes. And still, she would always be true to this confidence to ask us, to ask the dancers to bring out their own their own way or what they would have to contribute and then to to contribute that to what she's doing with it with a lot of humor there was a lot of laughing and at the same time it was oh, depth but not to be deep or to be heavy but it's there because Life. That's, that's, that's what happens in life. Tem a ver com os sentimentos humanos. Homem e mulher, só homem, só mulher. Ou eu, qual é a história que ela fez na cabeça dela e o que, que ela quis, então, reforçar? Fica um pouco aberto, eu acho. A relação homem e mulher é uma constante em todas as peças dela. A conversa dela era muito pessoal com cada bailarino, então é difícil. Eu acho que cada um escutou uma coisa diferente. Vocês sabem o prazer que é trabalhar com alguém que tem um interesse em você e na condição humana em que você se encontra. calls itself a contemporary dance school. We have every morning we had ballet class and after that right away a modern class. Juliet's there, there are a lot of pictures of Pina hanging in the corridors which was nice to see because I came from Volkwang and also we have lots of pictures of her hanging around there. A lot of movements like this, for example, of Sacre, is actually a folk one, no? I want to do so many things, but uh, the reality, the human being is not so strong, no? I always think my wishes are bigger than what I really can do. And I would like to dance myself. I never did, you know, since, I mean, just touch a little bit. Actually, I did everything because I wanted to dance. I did the choreographies because I wanted to dance them. <laughs> and then all my dancers, they always, they all wanted to dance so much. And then to make them happy, I have to work with them. <laughs> and, and somebody has to take care of all the, you know, the, the details and everything. So I never found the time to dance. And one of my dreams is, to find also a little bit time still to do myself something, you know. And the last performance with Kathy Miller, I remember she came to me, and said, but you know, Malou, when we closed her eyes, I don't know, because if you look down, you have a sensation, and if you look front, and if you look up, and you, you know, it was all this little detail always, no? not like you drop something. It's not always asking and asking and understand and try to, wow, yes, this is. That's why I need to breathe sometimes to go. <laughs> you don't need to have a 
eight years old or, you know, you can be 10, 20 and you lose someone. We all speak about the same, about love, about being separate, about having a kiss and not have a kiss and looking for love all our life. You know? And uh, I think it's for everybody. You will lie if it's not true. I mean, me, you will lie. We all the same. For this. And Café Mio is this one. What is a human being and how big is the art in the world and how different it is? So, and you see, I never would imitate something or take a step. I don't know about now the steps of it. It always was about human being. It always were about the person and that you are, when you learn so many things, that you have to be sincere enough and maybe have the background of now speaking with your own language. It was very hard for me to go back in here because all the remembering, you know, I'm sure New York makes something. I mean, at that time, because it was incredible, and to meet Pina there. No, my life would have not been the same. Uh, maybe that many people I could name, and certainly Pina was one of them, who changed your life. And you don't do it consciously. It's, um, it's like weather, you see. It affects you, and you're not even sure of it until it's over with. It's like when I last saw Pina the last time, she knew she was going, and she insisted I come to New York to see her. And uh, she, all she said to me is, Paul, 50 years. We've known each other 50 years. She says, how come? We didn't know that way back then. Even now, when I do something, I often think, I wonder if Pina would like it. <laughs> I still think she's there. You see, it'd be something if we were living together all the time, I'd be more aware of the absence. So I have difficulty, if I'm not careful, to th I still sometimes have this feeling, I think I've got to call Pina. And I think, oh, Paul, forget her, she's not there. It still happens to me sometimes if I'm not careful. No, I don't think... Um, I did not speak enough with Pina. I would love to speak with Pina now. No. It's too late, but... It helped me a lot to keep going. She said always, you know, my Lord, it's so beautiful that you are teaching every day. It's so fantastic. And every day I teach, and every day I say, you see, Pina, and keep going with a lot of love. Mm -hmm. And she's there. And there, yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> too much, no? <laughs> I never thought I would be here to speak about the Pinano. No. And as long as I'm alive, Pina will be alive. Because she's alive in my life. And I, I could still feel Pina. It was wonderful to dance with Pina. Finally, find someone like Pina. This, she's not replaceable. Anything that's really valuable in life is not replaceable. 